Hello and welcome to a huge edition of Layback with Betfair. We're halfway through the Flemington Spring Carnival. Oaks Day today, but we're going to press on and preview a massive card of racing at Flemington to round out the carney in the Champions Race Day. My name is Nick Foote. We've got Tom Haylock here. We've got Liam Clancy. It's it's some sort of Betfair entourage in here, boys, <laughs> today with the two big dogs coming in. No Reese, uh, Clance, welcome you, back. You're basically turtle, mate. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Definitely Vinny Chase. Uh, Clance, how are we going? Yes, it's good to be back. Uh, I'm glad we're previewing Stakes Day and not uh, Oaks Day because it seems like a tough card out there on Thursday. But uh, Stakes Day looks to come up very, very nicely. Yeah, Tommy Drama, how are you looking? <laughs> Have you seen a better race day? This is incredible. Everyone was potting Derby Day and saying it was a thing of the past and how poor the fields were. And then you lob here, and three of the best races I've ever seen. Incredible. It's been my favourite race day for some time now. You're ahead of the curve, are I, you? I think so. I've always been a trendsetter or trailblazer in <laughs> uh, in racing and in form, so maybe maybe there's a little bit in that. Who knows? <laughs> I'll leave here for two weeks, and you blokes got the biggest heads I've ever <laughs> come across. I don't know what's happening. Which is putting... extraordinary, because the tipping's certainly not matching the <laughs> ego at the oh, minute no, no, so right. far. I got all right Derby Day, like just slightly ahead, landed some nice mm-hmm. exotics, but she's a uh, cup day, and this might lead us into the lay-bin beautifully, Clance. <laughs> cup day's a trap. Oh, is it ever? And you know what? I went in, I was like, you know, really sensible. I was like, I've got bets in race seven and race ten. That's it. I'm not going to touch anything else. I haven't done enough time on it. And they're too tough. Too tough. <laughs> I've had a bet in every single race at Flemington and barely found a winner for the entire day. And it gets me every year. Yeah, every year it's a trap for me. I was sort of, I was paddling okay halfway through the day and it turned to chaos. I saw Tom Haylock actually yes. on the rooftop with an espresso <laughs> martini, and that was that was the sign that the day is going south, Tommy. That was when it started, mate. That was, <laughs> that was a beautiful time. Um, no, it's a war of attrition here. We're, we're flying. We're mm. going well. We've got. Um, I just can't wait for Saturday. This is the best day. BRC shared out on the backboard. They've done. Um, or Racing Victoria, whoever it was, um, have done a really good thing with this day because the champions races, unbelievable. Well, the champions miles. I think it's the race of the spring, isn't it? Has how you've got the champion stakes, you've got a Melbourne Cup winner last start, a Cox Plate winner last start, a Caulfield Cup winner at last start, you've got the Mayor's Rose, the Empire Rose winner, all group one winners, and it's not even the best race of the card. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Yeah, it's tried and true though. You look over at Hong Kong the way they've done it for many years now on their champion stakes mm-hmm. day. What have they got? The, they got the sprint and the mile, the cup and the vase. Yep. And you see how well it works over there. It's it's obvious to bring it here. And we don't need that twenty four hundred metre race because we probably don't have that quality here. So we're happy with those three, and away we go. Yeah, we um, should do a trial foals over there, Champions Day in December. <laughs> trial trial foals, trial and Champions Day. Lay there'll back be, with there'll be no trials coming into that. Day. Lay back with Beth Ferrell. We should do a lay back with Beth Ferrell. <laughs> what is there. happening? <laughs> it's been a big week. We should do a lay back with Beth Ferrell over there. <laughs> I'm putting trial foals in the lay bin. Um, Tommy, you can lay bin for us. <laughs> uh, we'll just talk about it off uh, off camera, but unread emails. Oh. People that have like a thousand emails and. A thousand unread texts. How are you operating with more than ten unread texts? Oh, I've got no idea. There's high levels of anxiety. Icons on desktops. Yep. Just sort it out. Clean up your life. Get organised. That's one for Harry. Yeah, I I completely agree with you. It gives me high levels of anxiety. <sighs> that sort of stuff that can go in the bin. Um, anything else, plans you got for us? Oh yeah, I've got another oh, good. Dar- Derby day. Um, we'll leave in the nursery. Hmm. And they were, you were, they were giving you these free cocktail drink vouchers if you make it over to the park to go see Anastasia. Obviously left outside alone, one of the greats. We love that. Bit of it, bit of it, um, just come along. Yes, yeah, just stuff. everyone get over numbers there. Are a bit low. Just for him. You get there and the bar shut. No! Oh. The bar was shut. <laughs> no way. 20 minutes into Anastasia's set with 40 minutes to go. It was an absolute oh. disgrace. I don't even know who Anastasia is, so yeah. there you go. Don't I'm pretend out. like you're not old, mate. I told you how the latter stage is. I'm out of grog, set me free. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was a bit of the limit. Oh, that's, going on that's not bad. Um, I'm going to leave there. That's uh, That was the crescendo for the lay bit. <laughs> I think, hey, boys, we've spoken about how good this card is. Let's get stuck into it. What do we say? Uh, Flemington, Tommy, r- track's been pretty good most of the week. Like Flemington, as you'd expect, it got firmer across the course of Cup Day, which generally leads to on pace and being hard to make ground. The rail goes to the eight-metre position for Champions Day. How's how's it all looking? Yeah, the track's played superbly. It's been helped by the, the wind as well. So we've had a couple of northerlies which have helped. Um, southerlies to finish off the, the Carnival, Oaks Day and Stakes Day. Very light, though. Mm. Um, and what 
it's perfect because you've got the southerly it tends to favour those up on speed, but then the track will play wider and wider. So I think every horse will get their chance, and I think it'll play pretty well. I wouldn't be surprised if they're coming down the outside fence in the uh, sprint races, though. Boys, let's kick off in race two, the listed Inglis banner for the two-year-olds, 1,000 metres. These are usually a bit of a minefield, these races. Not to say this one isn't, but uh, are you guys keen to have a bet at all in the race? You are the trial foals. You want a live show? Give us something. I will, I will be having a bet. I've just got to spend another... Um, six hours. Yeah, six <laughs> hours on this race. I didn't have this... Yeah, you've been doing time. Hong Kong. Yeah, correct. Hong Kong trial foals. <laughs> <laughs> one of the greats. Um, so nothing from nothing you Nothing for me. You, just yeah. yet. What about Clance? No, nah, no, nah, too difficult. Um, too many unknowns, but um, I see you like one. Yeah, I... I'm going a bit of a... When you see a, a different sort of player, an aggressive player like this across the carnival at a big price, I, I'm happy to find out. And uh, Number two, Red Baron for the Corstens Larkin team. Um, 31 bucks on corporates. You'll get better, as we know, with these roughies on BSP, I'd imagine. Um, was actually ran in the Maribyrn on plate on Tuesday on yeah, Cup incredible. Day. So you don't usually see this with a two-year-old Never. sort of a set play, do you? On a quick backup. But he was plonked out the back um, there and in the early part of the race and it was having a good old gawk around as they <laughs> usually do when they look for the rail, the two-year-olds, but really changed up nicely from the six to the four and the fastest six to the four split of the entire day. Blinkers go on here. Mm. It looks just an old-fashioned setup, but for a two-year-old and 31 bucks, I'm keen to just have a small each way bet and find out and race two, boys. Good luck, mate. Yeah. Usually you need talent for setups, but we'll see. Yes. <laughs> Jeez. Knee being no, 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 no. <laughs> I was <laughs> trying to read between the lines a bit too much there, I think, Clarence. Yeah. I think That's Tommy's it. had too many mimosas on Oaks Day already <laughs> here. Um, let's take a look at race three. It's the group three Queen Elizabeth Stakes. This is the 85th Queen Elizabeth Stakes we have in um, Australia, yeah. I think so. Right. Uh, it's a 2,600 metre race. Muramasa beat <coughs> Ladies Man and the Caulfield Cup winner, Duke de Sessa. Last year, how are we attacking the Group 3 Queen Elizabeth? Uh, I'm with the International here. Um, it's just about at that price range. Um, if it loses, it's just a losing bet. You um, speak of kinesiology. Kinesiology, number seven. Chris Waller, Damien Lane, great connections. Won this race with a, a nice horse uh, a couple of years ago. And similar profile. Its last run was fantastic. Um, it was wide throughout, kept coming. Query is he... he no, it probably doesn't even need... I was going to say 2,600 metres off the break. I think that's perfect from what we've seen overseas. So, um, yeah, I, I just think he'd be better than him, to be honest. Was that the Solcombe race? Yes. Two years ago, yeah. first, first start in Australia? Correct. First start in Australia, same connections, same owners, same trainer, um, same race, too good for them. I think this horse will do the same. Does he like sticking his head out? Hmm. Four, four Second. seconds under a length. Sure. Oh, he did stick his head out. Um, between them for seconds. For seconds, yeah. <laughs> he got his head down on the line for a second, but he was well beaten by a nice top there. But yeah, it's a fair question. The, the international ratings, I looked into it, they do rate clear, and I'll probably end up falling into that yeah, trap when the excitement will get the better of you on race day. So you can certainly see why. What about you, Clance? Are you, are you heading that way? No, I just think 275 is a, a touch short for me at this stage. We can get $3 plus, possibly, but it is such an unknown that I'm not really keen. I think there's enough betting opportunities on the card. I like that call. Enough betting opportunities. Which is weird because the next three races he's shouldering arms to. I know. So we'll see about this. <laughs> Has he got a bet? I don't know. I think he's still doing his form. Um, <laughs> Just if you could speak slowly, that'd yeah. be great. <laughs> hey, let's take a look at race four. This is named after Clance to the show, the always welcome. Um, <laughs> the stakes, 1,200 metres. General Bow won the race last year, beating Parasau. And it's our time. Uh, Rafael Nadal heads the market here, boys. We see front page also come down uh, from Sydney, who's a very nice, fresh horse. And I think you're going to be siding with some Sydney form here, Tommy. Yeah, I think it's a good thing, front page. I think it's the best horse in the race by a mile. Oof. Third in the galaxy, crossed the line with Sunshine in Paris, beating 2.8 in a new market, beating home Bella Nipatina. Started 21 in a champion sprint last year, won by Imperatriz. Ran sixth, Bella Nipatina finished fifth there, beat home Air, Airman, Lofty Striker, Sfera. Star Patrol, he's a great straight galloper. Um, he's just the best horse. He was second in a Kosciuszko last start. He's won a Kosciuszko before. He was beaten by far too easy. He had a perfect run in transit who was had the suck run in behind, just got out and was a fantastic run. But the times stack up. They're in 68.84 there. The winner was home 33.7. Sydney Stakes, overpass, 68.72. So tenth of a second outside of the Sydney Stakes. 
and a tenth of a second outside the Everest run, and he's come home quicker. So uh, the winners come home quicker. So the time stacks up with the Everest and the Sydney Stakes, and those type of horses are favourite in a champion sprint. So um, he is just a good bet here. Jumps um, jumps on the bunny, drawn perfectly. J Mac just wins. Does the fact that he's won from six down the straight concern you? No, because he's running the best sprint races. Um, he's won down the straight, so I'm not buying into that theory. He's, he's Like I said, he's been running in champion sprints down the straight. And, and being in the market at $20, there's no um, no Bella Nipotinas here. And, uh, yeah, very confident. Yep, plans. Yeah, and, and to add to that as well, I actually think that front page was holding far too easy and in that race. And J-Mac actually swip, swapped the whip through mm. to his left hand and just resented it front page and stopped immediately. So probably should have been much closer, if not winning that race. Having said that, this is a handicap, and just because you're the best horse in the race doesn't mean you get gifted it. Like, you've got the extra extra weight as compared to the others. So I'll, I'll be taking front page Does it matter down the straight? On. Absolutely. Of course oh, it does. I don't think it does. That's well, he, all right. That's why we get it. He's not ducking and weaving. <coughs> He'll be up on speed and he just bowling along. No, I'm with Nadal here, <coughs> who gets five and a half kilos, as you said, off front page. And Nadal's the one on the up. If you looked at that last start at, at Caulfield, that was this horse going to another level. Mm-hmm. Showed a real sharp turn of foot when Ethan Brown asked him to. Um, clocked the fastest four to the two um, split of the race. Um, it was eased down prior to the line. It was... Yeah, that was a very impressive win. And I think if Nadal bounces off that, he, he deserves favouritism and he's the one on the up. But you're right, front page at the moment is the best horse in the race, but it's a handicap and five and a half kegs and a horse on the up. I'm keen to back Nadal. I'm with you. I think Nadal's the rightful favourite. Um, being Flemington and such a wide field, that I will be playing a few roughies in the race, such as Red Hot Nick, which was superb first up on Cox Plate Day, that first um, race of the day. Nicolini Vito, I really liked him with Damien Oliver on Derby Day at a big price and just got way too far back, but rattled home and hit the line nicely. Has some really good ratings up the straight. And the final one I'll be with is Gaza Blanca finally has been gilded and has trialled okay. So they're all close to close enough to $20. So um, I'll be having small amounts on those. Cranbourne track record holder, Gaza Blanca. Yeah. I think. No, I think it broke the track record. Yeah, that was the second or third that start. Was that or I think there Cranbourne, were about 400. Yeah track records that day that yeah it was an absolute it ran incredible rating yeah early in its career yeah. yeah and after the gelding ready to get back yeah, to yeah. Yeah. every race they came in like track record <laughs> track record <laughs> every race that day i remember vividly uh let's move on to race five now it's the group two matriarch stakes for the mayors 2000 meters deny knowledge beat osmos and amakura in last year's edition and well this looks fairly open i feel uh, <clears throat> edition of the matriarch this year uh, boys, you've obviously got Hinged, who's your three dollar forty favourite. Who <laughs> I think last time this panel sat together, you blokes called a living, breathing moral. Yeah, I did, and it was butchered. It was one of the worst rides Shin's ever given a horse. Got forty eight lengths off the leader and charged home for third. I thought there was nothing wrong with the run. She's still attacking the line. It was a good run, but yeah, you, you've nailed it on the head. You put her in the race, and she bolts in that race. Correct. So she would have won that. She just drew wide. Fortieth start. Six wins, <coughs> still attacking the line. She is. She's, she's actually still attacking the line. She was coming as hard as anything on the line last start along the fence there. Um, I think she's a great bet here. And I'm, I might be an idiot. You might be laughing. But I think you've got nine of these through uh, awful Tessio. It's the, all well and good. There was two lengths between the field there, with half of them being unlucky. It's all well and good to attack the line. But... That's when you're behind horses. But she's she trying. She's trying. Like running past them and staying in front of them. That's the problem. She's never she's been a, in front of them. That's a, the problem. She's a complete nonny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think she's a great bet. I think she wins this. J Mac, perfect barrier, um, best form, best horse. Her run was five lengths better than Quickster um, when they met over a mile in the Axe Stakes, in my opinion. And yeah, I think the the price is okay. It might just be a losing bet if she doesn't win again. But at the price, she's a bet. Plants. I'd love to know if he takes it as well on race day when, when the, it is a losing bet. If he goes, ah, it's just another losing bet. Depends and, if they're sick. It off. Depends if they're sick or not. Um, so I, I agree that that Tessio was um, a little bit worrying given how closely they all finished across the line. I think Hinged is a rightful favourite. I couldn't possibly back her. Um, but there's one that was good late in that Tessio, which is Charisse, which uh, is about 70 to 1 on the exchange. So, given it was such a, uh, a close finish with all of those, I'll have something very small on Charisse, but I'm um, not that keen to play. What about Molly Bloom in the Tessio? What do we think of her? <coughs> yeah, she looked gone at yeah. the 400 and then kept finding. Um, little Mix meets her two and a half kilos better. 
for that run and was a shorter SP. So that's a consideration. Oh, I think Molly Bloom's going to be really suited to Flemington. Mm. Um, and that's the big tick with, with her. But, yeah. I agree. A I, her momentum was completely held mm. up late, tight between runners. Mm. Um, Don't know how I, she ran fourth. Yeah. yeah. She just, I, I think her price is too big to not have a bet. So I'm going to back Molly Bloom. I'm also going to back Quickstar. Third up, stepping to 2,000 for the first time since the SA Oaks. Just beaten. I know probably referencing Australasian Oaks form is a bit... <laughs> You know, it's a, it's a bit it's expired <laughs> perhaps, but it was her only time at 2,000, so it's not like she doesn't yep. get it. The margin was unfair that day. Comes through the Yanks, was only beaten by Lekvart. Um, more scope for improvement than Hinged, again. You, you're talking about Hinged, what is it, 40, how many starts? 46, 40 <laughs> something, 40 starts? So 40 many. 40, yeah. So um, I'm going to be back in Quickster and Molly Bloom, and let's make it a hamburger. I'm laying Hinged. So that she you're just, just doing that to spot Well, me, not you? really. I called it last time as well. I think... Nonnies exist, and she is just a complete nonny. She can chase swell all you like, but she doesn't like sticking her head out. It's simple as that. Um, so I'm going to take her on. Hinged is my lay. Quickster and Molly Bloom are my backs. Uh, let's have some cheese and some pickles and <laughs> a little bit of sauce and all sorts of stuff in this burger for Tommy Haylock. Uh, race six. Let's move on to the champions sprint, boys. This is an absolute race, Rooney. 1,200 metres. Imperatories beat Bonas Notches and in secret last year. It's a cracking field. Once again, we'll see the likes of Giga Kick return to the straight. Uh, Bella Nipotin is your favourite, who for the first time in her career strung consecutive <coughs> wins together to take her overall record to the second highest prize money ever behind Winks on the Australian tables there. Um, it is just a, it's a star field. But it's all about catching them, I feel, at where they're at in their preparation. Is that how you guys have attacked this race? Yeah, really. Yes, and ability to handle the straight as well, which yeah. I <coughs> is pretty key for a lot of these runners. Um, for example, you've got the likes of Giga Kick and Bella to a degree, who have always maybe just been half a length to a length worse off down the straight as compared to around the bend. Um, and then you've got a, an up-and-coming type like Barra Keel, who is the one I'll be siding with here at double figure price. She's at McEwen Stakes. Victory was an absolute star performance. Just trucked up. Was just going so much better than them all from a long way out and did it so easily. Now, that rating is, is half a length shy of Bella Nipotina's win last start. So um, if, you can pro if you can actually assess that Barrakeel can go to another level here or continue to just slightly improve, that $10 we're currently getting on the exchange thing is a very, very big I, price. I wouldn't talk you out of Barrakeel, but I put him in the Bella... Giga Camp, if you're talking about around a bend, like he's, his performances at the Valley are the ones where they've gone to a new level, and I question whether that can be converted to the straight. Like, I'll never talk you out of him because I think he's a bloody good horse, yeah. um, but I'm just wondering if he's better around a bend as well. And Barry One is also a potential mm. concern. And the other youngster that I love the look of is uh, Bellatrix Star, who just keeps getting better and better and well, better. Man. Um, that second in the Coolmore on Derby went, just had to track back to the inside and lost momentum for, for a couple of strides. Obviously, it was never going to beat Switzerland there, but it continues to go through and we're getting $13. So um, I'll be taking the, the up-and-comers versus the, the proven stars. And I'll also be taking a leaf out of your book with a bit of a hamburger here and taking on Kick Kick big time. So Big time. Um, what do you like about him? I just think that that's second in the Everest and knows off stealing it. Rates very similar to a lot of the peak ratings in this race. Not quite as good down the straight, and I'm just not willing to trust that for them. And we're asked to take second favourite about it. So, um, keen to take on Giga and Barrakeel and Bellatrix Star 2 for me. Tommy, what are you doing? Yeah, I probably can't come into, I've got a lot of time for Barrakeel, but probably can't come into him for your point. He couldn't beat um, Moby Dick and Headwall in a, three starts ago at Flemington and Mr. Exclusive and Home Rule before that at Flemington down the straight. So Both heavy tracks. Yeah, that's that's true. I I want to actually be against Giga Kick and um, Bella Nipotina. Peak, they peaked. They've had their grand final. They come here. Times didn't... Um, and the way the race was run, I thought it was really weird. Um, the times weren't great. As I mentioned, the Sydney Stakes and the Kosciuszko were incredibly similar times to that um, Everest. Um, Bella Nipotina just looked like the winner had every possible chance last start. If you could back a horse at the 600 <laughs> for your life, like, she was just the right spot there. It was perfect. Um, yeah, I'm just leaning to being against Giga Kick and Bella Nipotina and having the field on my side. So I might just lay those two and see how we go. 
Yeah, I'm gonna play two here, um, one at a bit of a price. I'm gonna back um, Overpass to start <coughs> with. I just thought that was an exceptional oh, win love first it. up mm. in the Sydney Stakes after not making the final field of the Everest, where I think he would have been in the finish. I reckon the he would have won the Everest. Yeah, yeah. I, like so, um, and we talk about, I guess, the rating coming out of the Everest. Everyone's like, oh, it's the worst rated Everest of all time and, and this and that, but that Sydney Stakes rated pretty well um, yep. considering so overpass for me has seen the seen the straight and been successful here before um, proven performer there so I'll be backing overpass and I, I, I didn't think I'd ever do this again um, but I'm gonna back I am unstoppable have something on, <laughs> yeah, on I him. Make a case for him yeah for sure. I, I was actually against him second up and I made the point on here I actually laid him on the show um, who was yeah, he against didn't want to be with him at all. at all no but he was he was held up when the sprint went on in the <coughs> McEwen. Yep. Um, he was second up for Kieran Ma. He's drawn the best part of the track here. He's going to have some cover and be launching later. I loved the way he finished off in the McEwen. And we know that straight track is where he's, proved, uh, he's delivered his best figures, which was second in, in a Coolmore. So um, I'm going to have something on Ironman Stop at a big, big price. Yep. You couldn't be letting Stretton Angel go around without you, could you? Well, yeah. my two girls are there. Stretton Angel went right yeah. to the party, so I, I feel a bit dirty. Yeah, I just, yeah. Are you okay? I feel that yeah, over here. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk myself through a car wash on the way home. I'm <laughs> stealing Brown McMonagall for you. I know, uh, my boy, DVD. Oh, that's right. Brown McMonagall. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We might have to. We'll go wide. Sounds we'll like go wide that yeah. length. Uh, race seven, boys. The Group One Champions Mile. Wait for age sixteen hundred metres. Pride of Jenny beat Mister Brightside. And alligator blood last year. This is an absolute cracking addition to the race. Uh, can't wait to see where you guys, what angles you're going to work here. But with a few runners just dodging via Sestina in the two thousand metres. Um, the byproduct of that is we get this outstanding field. We get the uh, the likes of Pride of Jenny, who's your five dollar fifty <coughs> favourite at the moment with Corpse. Does she bounce back? Is she at the end of the prep? The Ben Mellum and Declan Bates oh, um, saga. That I'm, I'm surprised we missed the lape in there yeah. with that Tommy Antino. Tommy's who's actually put a full schedule at the end of this just so <laughs> we can take take aim. Antino was so brilliant in the tour act. Like it was just such a clear co career peak figure. Is that an anomaly, or do you back that up here? There's there's many angles. Mr. Brightside, your consistent performers, six bucks the field. How are you going? Yeah, like, what do you make of that? Antonio, know, I know another wheel led and probably didn't travel and, and wasn't as comfortable. We smashed another wheel. Another wheel comes out and wins. Per career peak figure. We've got the same with Via Sestina in the next race. Two horses coming off probably grand finals, career peaks. They've got to replicate it uh, or bounce back or or continue on like they're not going to run to those figures ever again but um yeah it's a fascinating race i guess the thing with antino is comes out of a handicap yeah goes up three and a half kilos and has to do it against a better <coughs> caliber of figure. but if he runs to that figure oh, yeah like, no, 100%. He's, he's right in this yeah. but i can't trust that figure mm. can't trust that performance i found this race very tricky. I'm not keen to have a bet other than Von Hawk. No, I'm joking. Um, <laughs> nah. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> I can't believe no, I didn't I found get him in the chat. I found <laughs> it too hard. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very, very keen to play Pride of Jenny here. It's be one of my best of the day. I, I'm, I'm treating this very similarly best to... Of the day? I mean, you look at another, another wheel against Santino, and we'd suggest that Antino and V.S. Sistina had the perfect setup to run the figures that they did. I don't think yep. anyone could argue with that. But another wheel's come out since and, and franked out and, and gone to another level because it was almost as if it was the, the absolute worst possible setup for that horse. Hmm. I think the same for Pride of Jenny. They've gone 12 long, lengths faster than standard to the 800 and yet prognosis was right on Jenny's back and, and everything was already up there with, against Jenny. Very willing to forgive that. I think there's no doubt that the public are going to be against her given the, uh, the jockey change. Just but on that, she was... When they went out to the track for Cox Plate, she was the biggest roar of any horse. Like the, the fans love her. Do mm. they jump off now? Yeah, I think I think there will be a bit of sentiment against I'm, her. I, yeah, for sure. I don't want her to win. I do. I I, I still love uh, the horse. Doesn't know who's who's. Is Mellon McQuarrie though? Show. I'd rather Declan. Yeah, sure, which is odd because knows the horse so well. But I, I'm I'm be going to be trusting this. And I mean, she won this race last year. If those Southerlies do kick up, she's going to be in the perfect spot. Um, I'm petrified of broadsiding mm -hmm. and, and what he'll produce. 
Um, but, but Jenny has the runs on the board um, in this race and in similar races. And there's no one really to track the field up. And Desert Lightning might come over and sit second. I was going to ask you, who, who chases? Well, uh, yeah, I think Desert Lightning from the wide draw probably has to come over and sit second. But I, I don't think that um, you know Desert Lightning will be close enough to drag the rest of the field up. We, we know Brightside's not going to play that role. It doesn't work well for him. Um, Fangirl, too far back. Steffi Magnetica should have won the, um, the Golden Eagle. But again, too far back. And, and will, they, will they be close enough in sight to actually attack Jenny? I'm I don't hoping think they not. can. No. It's yeah. You make some really interesting points. So I'm going to be fascinated to see how the first 400 meters of this race plays out. Um, I'm against Jenny. I love Jenny still. I'm not dropping off just yet. Like Tommy, he's already torn up the membership. Uh, I, <laughs> I <was> never remember. <laughs> I want to side with the Cox Plate form because it's the best form reference in the world, like yep. ratings wise. And I think broadsiding. Um, was the best of the beat brigade there. So I'm going to side with broadsiding uh, here. Back to 1,600 metres. And it's a big tick now that he's shown that he can chase a strong tempo as well. So that was... Th- they were the queries going into the Cox Plate. The conversations were around the Via Sestinas and the broadsidings. Can they chase the pride of Jenny and the strong tempo? And I think they've ticked those bo- that box now, even though they were completely smashed by Via, but she's not here. So... Broadsiding for me in the mile, boys. I I'm I don't know what you guys think, but I'm wide barrier back to sixteen hundred meters. I think he's looking for further than two thousand now. Broadsiding. I thought he obviously was he was took a while to pick up in the Golden Rose first up at fourteen hundred meters. Now he's been to two thousand. He's got to come back in trip from a wide draw. I couldn't possibly have him, but um, that's yeah. I think twenty four hundred meters is his next race. Not Do you think they'll the jag line. right back to the end? I, I'm not sure. They'll if he'd drawn to. a good not barrier, with Jenny in it, I'm not sure they'll want to. Yeah, but if he'd drawn a good barrier, I would expect him to be in the first five or six. Mm. But now he's wide. I don't. Yeah. I think he has to given back to sixteen hundred. I think they have to ride and look for a spot. Mm. Otherwise, it's curtains. Yep. Uh, let's move on now to. Race number eight, the Group 1 Champion Stakes. Wait for age 2,000 metres. A tissue beat Jewess and a Young Vertha last year. It's all about Via Sestina here in the market, isn't it? Personally, I am actually shocked that she's gone up $1.70 corporate. So I was expecting some winks odds yep. about her, given the performance in the Cox Plate. Uh, the fly in the ointment for her is probably without a fight and there's been a little bit of market support for without a fight early where's he at um into and we know i've heard sam freeman so many times he's just a naturally fit horse and they don't have to, you know he just loves work so as well so does he just come and hit the tr- hit the ground running first up uh it's a it's a fascinating race the caulfield cut winner duke to sessa lobs Docklands lobs here as well. I assume they'll go here over the five diamonds because they don't have a, a jockey listing uh, in Sydney. How are you assessing it, mate? Yeah, I, I'm disappointed with this. I didn't open a dollar forty because I'm keen to be against her, and I'll lay her. Um, I'll still lay her at a dollar sixty. Um, I won't lay her at a dollar seventy. Dollar seventy five is getting um, scary. So, um, yeah, I just don't think she can replicate that peak figure again. She can't. She won't need to. She doesn't obviously. have to. Yeah, I know that. Um, but but we saw Animo do this off a Cox Plate win and look pretty at plain um, in a McKinnon um, or Champion Stakes. So, yeah, I I don't I think Anthony Sam Friedman said that they're just hoping without a fight runs on for a nice placing or something yep. like that as well. So, yeah, I'm more leaning to be against versus Stina, but she's probably longer odds than I thought she'd be. Yeah, I... I've uh, I'm almost striking through the Cox Plate as it was that perfect setup, and happy to price her. I've gone about a length better than her Turnbull victory, um, and still comes out at a dollar seventy five. And I mean, it's mm. it's a dollar. She's a dollar twenty, dollar fifteen if she reproduces, which um, we know she won't. But as you say, she doesn't need to. I think she's well and truly um, established at the top of the market here. Uh, I just don't want to get involved at those those odds, Flemington Carnival. Um, I think a tissue is really well suited. Um, loses J Mac, which isn't great. Um, but there's one horse that I think is is over the odds, so I'll be playing there. And, and funnily enough, it's a horse called Arapaho. Um, mm-hmm. It was sensational late in the Craven Plate, um, and it was a farcically so slow tempo that day. So still came home with the best splits in the race. Uh, we're getting about eleven to twelve dollars currently for the place, uh, and that's a that's a, a play I'd much rather play than than try and take on Via Sestina for the win. 
Oh, I think Via Sistine is the best bet on the program. Like, she's got to rake down, what, <coughs> seven lengths to be even... <laughs> eight lengths to even be back to some of these? Like That's if you don't take into account that J-Mark was standing up for the, for yeah. the last 60. And, and the best part about this is, and we haven't spoken about her yet, is we get to know knowledge in the field, who's sort of like your Timu pride of Jenny <laughs> in many respects. She'll set up a strong gallop up top and... We know Via Sestina absolutely thrives off that now, which we saw in the Cox Plate. So um, I, I'm really keen to be with her again. I, I'm backing in the stable that, you know, she just goes on and comes through this. They, they, don't, they didn't need to run her in this. She's just absolutely torn them apart in the, in the Cox Plate. So any sign of her not being 100% She's getting turned out and going to the paddock because she's earned that. So it's I'm really keen. Unlike Waller to do this, mm. Waller would usually be straight at the paddock, look after her, take his time, and back to back up off a. She loves work. Well, she yeah. ran she's seven clearly, laps on clearly, two breakfast with the best, so she just loves run. work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she might be shorter if Bella wins too. A few people have had the double Oregon, their favourites. Yes, <laughs> let's. Uh, Good chat. Yeah, I like that. That's a bit of Hong Kong chat, a little parlay yeah, for the favourite yeah, little last. Little trial files in Macau. <laughs> uh, let's go to the trip. Let's do that. Let's now, do that. Now we're talking. <laughs> race nine. Uh, we'll just close out with a, a handicap <coughs> down the idle diddle here, boys. So I'm going to be shouldering arms to this race, but uh, you guys are actually siding with one. Bit of tortured minds. <coughs> I would have liked, just on the, I would have liked, and someone raised this on social media, I would have liked them to finish with the three mm. champions races. Rather than have this as the last race, but that's just a little. This is the grand final, isn't it? The so, this is what everyone's waiting for. The benchmark yeah. 80 down the straight. It frees frees the make your way to, uh, it frees the traffic up. Make it your helps way to the Sophie cab. Ellis Baxter and, and <laughs> before the bar closes. It helps the taxi flow. Oh, I'm, yeah. Well, that's good for me because I'm not overly keen to play in the champions races. I think they're all very, very hard and there's so many horses coming off peak figures and whatnot. But I am keen to play here. Uh, good speed. She's a little shenanigans. Um, Rifkin, Trapeze Warrior. You got a wall behind them. Um, Nation State, Keenan, Port Albert, Zofika, Mrs. Icelandic. There's a, a fair bit of speed as you would expect. Pretty keen to play. Um, I loved the trials of Pisanello um, before its first up win. Backed it there heavily, was well backed, and it was a dominant win. Incredible performance. But um, it's a harder race here today, and Barrier One's a big query. So. Uh, I don't want to lose, and I'll be having Pisanello in the Aquati and stuff, but I found Keenan here, number one, beaten uh, 1.49 in a listed fireball at Randwick when we last saw him. He's had two jump outs of Flemington. His latest was outstanding, moved really well, um, and he returns here gelded, has a class to win, and I like him here. So, um, yeah, I think it'd be hard to beat um, Keenan. The other one that I will be having something on and having in the quaddies and multiples is number 12, Kiko. Loves a straight, um, sliced through in a recent jump out win and looked very impressive there. Beat Man Manolo Bling, who came out and won on Tuesday. So mm. the trial form of the jump out form stacked up and, and she loves the straight Kiko. So uh, my numbers are 1, 10 and 12 to finish off. I'm not going to be able to add anything to that because Keenan was the one that I liked gilded um, and the most recent trial over 1200 was great. And Kiko's trial was exceptional, so uh, I'm just going to leave what you said there, Tommy, and and, uh, and piggyback on the back of you. Piggybacking Tommy. Kick. Straight into the second half of Cup you Week. Beauty. <laughs> Jeez. That's... Which is saying something, because I usually like to oppose him for fun. I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. So, I know you all do. No, he's, uh, he's taking the words right out of my mouth, yeah. such as Meatloaf wait, used to say. Wait till Hinge runs an admirable second. You'll be hopping off that <laughs> shoulder pretty bloody quickly. Uh, let's take a look at our What Caught My Eye segment, and obviously the Melbourne <coughs> Cup has been run and won. Knight's Choice, John Simons, Sheila Lax and Robbie Dolan. What a story this is, by the way, that Robbie Dolan's basically secured this ride when he was singing on a cruise that Sheila Lax <laughs> was on. It's some of the most extraordinary it's stuff. Um, but we'll talk about BSP because every time a Ruffy wins, the BSP just smokes the corporate. It's $60 on the home tote. No. 60, well, I, was, I was standing next to a bloke in the members after the race who and I said, who'd you back? And he goes, and he showed me his phone. He had $10 on Knight's Choice and took 67 fixed at a certain corp. And I'm like, mate, you're cool. You've killed yourself. When Congrats, you paid $268 but... Betfair start across. 268 So if he had um, the average corporate bookie price a minute before jump, if you had $20 on the winner, you're $3,300 better off. 3200 
ninety-eight dollars and thirty-nine cents. Um, better off. He could have had two and a half grand instead of six hundred and seventy bucks. It's That's post common as well. It's post. It's incredible. So across the day, we saw um, an average Betfair starting price of over forty dollars. This mm. is um, before you take comment out, but over forty dollars. Average tote price of twenty dollars. So mm. <laughs> incredible across the ten races. It's funny that like Melbourne Cup, that there's always so many people that have backed the winner. Um, you know, the one-time punters, and I, I've chatted to a few people since Tuesday. And they go, oh, you know, my housemate or my, you know, my PT, yeah. or they've backed it. I was like, oh, you know, 10 bucks each way on it. Like, how good is this? And every time that I said to them, oh, God, like, unbelievable, bet for it was $268. They feel like they've lost. Yeah. Like, they feel like they've actually <laughs> backed they a should, loser. Yeah. As they should. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was certainly one of the biggest I said that um, with dad, advantages dad, I've seen. The people that back Nice Choice, I bet, didn't lose as much as me. On the <laughs> yeah. no, that, that's exactly one certainty, right. Clint. So dad, they can lose all they want. My they dad had a few couple of dollars each way on it at hundreds. And I said, paid 268 you Enough, what are you doing at Betfair? He goes, Well, did you bet the winner? I said, No. He's got, got me. Tommy's, da- <laughs> Tommy's dad's having some spring here. Just <laughs> in, Leviathan owner of Lovely Cart <laughs> into backing Knight's Choice in the Cup. This is outrageous. That's it. Hey, they what, can't have any, mo- any more money in the thousand guineas at this point. They've been <laughs> tapped out. Um, <laughs> what about, I don't know if it's even here, but how about the presidential election? I know we've been talking about the liquidity in those markets. Yeah, how much was matched in the end? Still going, I think. We yeah. Uh, the market. It's been incredible. What is it's I mean, 9, 9 a.m. on Thursday, so we're expecting um, Kamala to concede shortly. So um, we'll have the final figures very soon. 500 million <laughs> around that mark. It's right? outrageous, isn't it? Mm. Um, let's head to Rose Hill now, boys. We'll just uh, preview three races up there. Um, what can we expect with the track, Tommy? Yeah, I think the track uh, back at Rose Hill, three metres, um, I think the track will play okay. So. Weather's good. Yeah, weather's fine. Good for um, no excuses. Just monitor because we're approving races later in the day. Inside and up and in can be favoured there. Yep, let's um, have a look at the English Golden Gift, which is race six. And this is where old uh, Macau Trials Files Haylock comes into his own. <coughs> well, Macau Trials Files Haylock found <laughs> North England on debut in the strongest lead up race. <clears throat> to this, um, the Breeders' Plate, and he was fantastic there. I, I thought he stuck on superbly. Um, Rose Hill suits better, in my opinion. I know he's trained at Randwick, but Rose Hill suits him better. His trial at Hawkesbury leading in mid-prep trial was outstanding. Tim Clark, Barry 3, I think he's the horse to beat. And I'll be back in North England. I'm sticking with him. Yep, 3 bucks 40 on course at the moment. I think that's a fair price, Good yeah. price, okay. Um, any opinion for you in this Race, or are we just back in the trial files, man? I think get on my get back. Get on that piggyback, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I haven't done this race closely, but I did love that North England um, debut running third, so I wouldn't be against him there. Let's take a look at race seven. It's the Group 2 Hot Danish Stakes for the Phillies and Mares, 1,400 metres. Roots won this race last year, which was I think was my first winner for the Carnival on uh, <laughs> this day last year. Um, <laughs> at a good price, though. Um, beating, me. Yeah, beating <laughs> Cold Iron, fine point. Uh, Magic Time Lobs as your favourite here. Comes through the same race as Belle Claire. A few of these do, the likes of Alentia too, who are in the market. You got a strong opinion in this one, Clance? Yeah, I've... I know you're being asked to take a much shorter price than its win last start, but I really like Belle Claire. That was, you know, we've got a Group 1 winner in New Zealand here that just hadn't quite adapted to Australia yet. Um, they were leading and winning that day, so you'll have to be cautious there, but I don't think that we might get anything different here on on Saturday. So I'm, I'm keen to be with Belle Claire again. Gets an extra kilo off Alentia for winning that race. So I think that pretty much rules out Alentia for me. Um, you can certainly be worried about magic time, but at a two dollar forty five favourite. I'm really keen to take Magic Time on. Uh, so main bet Belle Claire, but I'll also be having something on Q's Likely, which is uh, fifty to one at the moment. Um, was in that same race. Was first up in Australia, running there. Was just out the back, like absolutely no intention to win the race, and then worked through the line unbelievably well. Go back and watch the replay, and uh, it's the flashing light, fifty hundred metres past the post. I think we'll be getting a much more of a rev up here to try and win this. Um, she's only four year old, got plenty of upside here, so a fifty to one I'll be having a throw up stumps there too. I want to back Magic Time. I just think she's the she's a belter of a mare and, and mm. the best horse in the race. She couldn't get past Belle Claire um, last start in the invitation, but third up here, I just expect her um, to turn the tables, be at peak fitness, and I, I'm just backing in Graham Begg in the yard that she's the best horse in the race, really. So um, she's certainly one of mine, and 
uh, hopefully something for the Battlers in Sydney on Saturday. Uh, let's take a look. Are you, you're not uh, a bad, are you? I'm just no, going with the run sheet, but I, I he think, always does this. I think <laughs> magic time draws a little sticky. I'll be waiting till late, because if they are later, if Belclair comes right into it again, and I don't know where they get on magic time from that wide gate, the outside draw. So, yeah. Let's take a look at race A. This is the feature of the day. The, uh, what a race. The $2 million five diamonds, 1,800 metres. I got five headaches doing the yeah. form for this race. It was, uh, the, the, it's called, actually going to be called the five headaches. It should now. be. Yeah. It's um, better than the barn dance. And the big dance. <laughs> yeah, it is an absolute uh, cracking field though, isn't it really? Like it looks a really competitive race. As it's, you'd expect, two it's mil. not a two million dollar field, but it's a good field. You got the it's champion, competitive Champions Day races of three mil or whatever, and you got this bunch of five year olds that are average to good. Um, oh, I, I want to be. I won't be losing if Territory Express wins third up. <laughs> He's a painful horse, and um, I backed him last start. Well, I did do a live react show with Tom last week of him telling me every part of Territory Express's last start. <laughs> yeah, it was sick. But he's he's six dollars. I think that's fair enough. You get seven dollars bet fair. Um, I think it's just a really good horse and a line chaser, and up to this distance, I don't think's an issue. Yep. Uh, I just think there's going to be such a hot speed here. You've got I Know A Star, Majorville, and more Victorious mm. coming across, all vying for a piece of the lead. Pericles drawn 16 is going to have to get over there somewhere. And Lindemann was so good one on the pace last start as well. So, um, And Yellow Brick is drawn 14 as well. Where's <coughs> going to get to? So, uh, I think there'll be a really hot pace on, which does set it up for a horse like Territory Express. Um, just but it, it might, if 1800 is a query for territory, that might bring about his undoing. He might be too far off him. But yes. So mm. um, leading to that, I can't really chime into Territory Express knowing that can miss the kick, you know, three lengths last start and, and uh, is going to that unknown distance of 1800. The horse that we know is going to get the distance is attrition. Um, it was a really nice win in the Hill Stakes, I think it was, yep. um, out to 1900. Really strong, great form lines, obviously beating Kovalika that day. We're getting a really good each way price to find out. We're at $8 currently. I'm, I'm pretty keen to stick with that. Um, you'll be getting 250 260 to play. So um, that's the way I'll be playing this very, very tough race. Yeah, shouldering arms for me, boys. Good luck in the five diamonds. Let's take a look at the lay streak now where we're just ticking along beautifully here. I'm back. I'm not sure if my total's been completely updated yet after last week. After you've, only had, you've only had a two streak of two, mate. <laughs> I'm you must be going bloody well, Tommy, to be up there. We had the same, I haven't laid a winner all, we had the same, all series. We had the same lay last week. Who was that? You were Froche. Yeah, we yeah, were. Yeah, Froche. Yeah. Surely I've got more than under the seven. Froche drift, did you? Big drift oh, lay. There we go. BSP <laughs> gets me the show. every time. They follow the show. Um, Clance, who's your, who's your lay of the day on Saturday? Lay of the day is Giga Kick in the sprint. Uh, I think there's plenty of winning chances and uh, keen to go away from, from him, Tommy. Um... You go. I haven't got one at the moment. Well, mine's hinged. Uh, oh, yes. My, hinged is my lay of the day. She'll end up drift. She's 340 now. Watch her drift to five bucks and you get no return again, mate. <laughs> this is just outrageous stuff. Might play it safe and lay Quickster. Quickster? He's just trying to hold on to that $646. What sort of liability are we going to be talking about Quickster? Who you... cares? I'm, I'm winning. <laughs> Hey, that's what the lay streak's all about. I haven't, I haven't laid a, a winner or carnival. I like, wish you laid. I sure. wish you laid night's choice. <laughs> a bit of liability. Um, I was thinking right. about doing something. Yeah, okay. Very that. tactical, Tommy. Go quick start. Uh, let's go to our best bets now. What are our best backs for the weekend, lads? Um, I'll be backing front page. Race four number one at Flemington. Very, very hard to beat. Um, Hinge the other one. I'm pretty keen each way. Best value, Keenan in the last. Um, was it number five, is it? Race nine, number five, Keenan? Head-to-head best back. So I'm on to Nadal in the always welcome stakes as well, going head-to-head with front page. But I th- Let's have a million dollars on it. <laughs> yeah, all right, sounds good. The other home? I think my best my best bet is Via Sestina, but my best result's Nadal. What about you? Uh, sticking with Pride of G. Uh, hopefully she's just too good for him in the mile. It sometimes just pays to be you know, loyal to some of your own, which Clance is. Uh, boys, been a lot of fun today. Um, thanks for bringing in the mimosas, Clancy said he would. Oaks Day, enjoy the day at the track. Have we got anything for Oaks Day today? I don't know if this will even reach it. On no, it probably doesn't. Oh, we might get there. I don't know. I don't really know. Who's like your tip much. in the Oaks? The feature. This will hit the hit the even they can. 
they can even well, the have live opinion trainers. of us. Yeah. <laughs> Sergeant Quinella. There you go. Yeah, we're, we're you just start, yeah, we're the Johnny Sergeant Quinellas. We're Anything for you, Thanks. Club. Yeah, I'm really keen on um, Pleasure Artist $20 um, each way. I think um, it, it suits a lot of the people sitting at this table. So <laughs> His nickname I'll... in high school, I believe. <laughs> uh, very I, good. I do. I've had a really good look at race six, and I'm pretty keen on Carhoff each way. Okay, I love this. Enjoy looking back on this when this gets yeah. released after race six. Yeah, correct. No, um, I, no one would have watched the show. Terrific, show by terrific podcasting. Um, <laughs> a lot of fun across the course of the weekend. I can't wait to round out the Flemington Carnival Champion Stakes. So it's going to be an absolute corker. But we'll be back next week to do it all again on Layback with Bet Bet. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.